Hey everybody, welcome back to another Circuit Basics tutorial. My name is Scott, and today I'm going to show you how to set up your Raspberry Pi without a monitor or keyboard, also known as in headless mode. All you're going to need is a desktop computer or a laptop, and an Ethernet cable to connect your Raspberry Pi to your wireless router. So let's go ahead and get started here. Go ahead and open up your web browser and we're going to need to download a few programs. First we're going to download the operating system image for the Raspberry Pi and you can get that at raspberrypi.org find the downloads link and you've got like six or eight different operating systems to choose from. Noobs is a bundle of uh, several different operating systems uh, I've got Raspbian, Snappy Ubuntu Core, OpenELEC, RasBMC, Fedora, RISC OSC. For this tutorial, we're going to be using Raspbian. So go ahead and download the zip file. Now we're going to need to download the program that is going to burn this image to an SD card. And we can do that by getting Win32 Disk Imager. Search for Win32 Disk Imager. There's one on SourceForge. This is the one I was using. Download that too. All right, now we're gonna need a program that we can use to scan our local network, and it'll tell us the local IP address of our Raspberry Pi once it's connected to our wireless router. That's called Advanced IP Scanner. So just Google that, it should pop up. It's a free program, works pretty well. Now we're going to need to get another program. Uh, it's called PuTTY. It's an SSH client, and that's basically the program that we're going to use to access the command prompt of the Raspberry Pi. So Google PuTTY, and then find the link for download PuTTY. And this is the main page. Um, I want to find the section that says binaries. Putty uh, that we're going to be using is right up at the top here. So just save that. And the next program we're going to need is program that will format the SD card and that's called SD card formatter. Just type in www.sdcard.org find the downloads link and in my case I'm using Windows but you can also download it if you're using a Mac. EULA, scroll down, accepted. It. 
Alright, after everything's finished downloading, uh, go ahead and unzip it and install the programs. Now, we've got four programs that we're going to use here. SD card formatter, PuTTY, Advanced IP Scanner, and Win32 Disk Imager. So the first thing we're going to need to do is format your SD card. If you haven't done so already, insert your SD card into your card reader on your computer and open up SD formatter. Select the drive and click on options. Now format type you want full erase and format size adjustment on. Now click format. Um, I like to do this extra step to change the file system. I like to use XFAT. Uh, I think it's a little bit faster than uh, FAT32. So I just go in, in Windows and right click on the drive and that brings up the option to format the SD card. And under file system you'll see FAT32, NTFS, and XFAT. Click on XFAT and just do quick format. We're just changing the file system and click start. It's pretty fast. All right, now we're ready to actually burn the Raspbian image into the SD card. And for that, like I said, we use Win32 Disk Imager. So now you can select the image file, click on the little folder to the right of the text field right there, and select the Raspbian image. And click right. Okay, at this point we have our Raspbian operating system written to the SD card. So go ahead and take the SD card out of your computer, stick it into the Raspberry Pi, and power off your Raspberry Pi, plug it into your wireless router with the Ethernet cable, and power it on. And once you do that, we're ready to scan our network for the local IP of the Raspberry Pi. So we can open up Advanced IP Scanner. You have two options. You can install it or just run it as a portable version. I always run it as a portable version. So we'll click Run. And then you'll see a green arrow in the upper left-hand corner. Just click Scan. And now it's going to scan for all the devices connected to our wireless network. And the Raspberry Pi should pop up there. You see the column for manufacturer, there's a Raspberry Pi Foundation. And in the column to the left, you'll find the IP addresses. This is our local IP address. So take note of that. We'll be needing it later. Now we're ready to access the command prompt with PuTTY. So go ahead and open up PuTTY. And make sure your connection type is on SSH, secure shell. And then enter that local IP address that we got from IP scanner into that. 10.0.0.105 in my case. And go ahead and click open. If this is the first time you're logging in with your Raspberry Pi over SSH, you're going to get a security warning, but just disregard it. Uh, you're just using your own Raspberry Pi and your own network, so there's nothing to worry about. And we're at the login. So the login is Pi, and the password is Raspberry. And now we're at the command prompt. 
So this is the first time we're using the operating system on this uh, SD card. So it's asking us to run the Raspi config menu. So we'll go ahead and do that. Enter sudo raspi config. Press enter. There's a lot of different options here. I'll cover all this in another video. But for now, I'm just going to expand the file system, which is probably one of the first things you want to do after you boot it up for the first time. And I'll probably overclock it. So I'm just going to go ahead and select expand file system. And we're back here. You can change your password, um, enabling boot to the GUI or to uh, command line. Some advanced options with some pretty useful stuff in there, but for now let's overclock it. And I like to go on high. Turbo causes issues with uh, the LCD sometimes. Right, click OK. And we'll finish. And reboot. So now we're logged out. And all we need to do to get back into the Pi is go back to Putty and enter our local IP address in there. And we're all set. All right, I hope you uh, found this tutorial useful. And uh, definitely stay tuned for other tutorials that are coming up. Talk to you later.